Hi all. In this video, we're going to be looking at a slight twist on the addition mechanism for alkenes, whereas we can uh, undergo a carbocation rearrangement. So when we looked at a simple alkene before, and we said we'd have, say, one butene plus HX, we knew that, based on Markovnikov's rule, we would get HX addition like so. Now, the story is slightly different if we look at something a little bit more complicated. The steps are all the same, and so we'll still be looking at our nucleophilic pi bond attacking the positive end of a polarized small molecule, and our intermediate will still be the same that is, we'll have our hydrogen adding by Markovnikov's rule to give us a more stable carbocation. In this case, we've produced a secondary carbocation. And so that's better than the primary carbocation we could have had at the end. But what we can notice is that we have the possibility to create an even more stable, a tertiary carbocation. And what happens here is called a hydride shift. Essentially, when we have a scenario where we have a hydrogen or a methyl group, that would be called a methyl shift, next to a carbocation, we can actually have that hydride or methyl group scooch next door to create a more stable transition state. The original hydrogen that we added is still on the end. But now, the hydrogen that we just moved over is present uh, on what used to be our carbocation, leaving us behind with an even more stable tertiary carbocation. That, then, can react with the X- minus that we left behind, whatever the negative part, or the negatively polarized part of our original reagent was, to give us a product that we maybe wouldn't have anticipated right off the bat. And so in this case, the two pieces of our original HX, we have our hydrogen here, that got added uh, to one of the original alkene carbons. And then our second part, the X minus in this case, got added in a place that we wouldn't have expected. And this is what we would expect now to be our major product because it goes through the more stable carbocation intermediate. We probably would also have some of our product that would be what we would have expected, but that would be a minor product. It's really hard to predict the uh, ratio or the proportion of these two products, except to say one's major and one's minor. It really depends a bit on the branching of the original molecule um, and what sorts of rearrangements are possible. In the case we're showing here, going from a secondary to a tertiary carbocation is great. If there were a possibility that we could go from, say, a primary carbocation to a much, much more stable tertiary uh, that would happen even more. There'd be a greater disparity between the two products. For now, we can sort of say the top mechanism is what happens when we don't have a rearrangement. We did go through a carbocation uh, intermediate. So anytime we see a carbocation intermediate in a reaction mechanism, we want to consider the possibility of rearrangement.